look at. Anyway, I found this um, interesting recipe. I think it's the, uh, we'll, you'll, we'll see. I've, anyway, yeah, we'll see. Beans, right? It's going to obviously a peaceful plant. You know, Rod, I said to Richard the other day when I was talking to him, I asked if he had a slow cooker, Maureen, and he said he didn't. And I believe I have an extra slow cooker, a smaller okay. one, because I usually use my bigger one. So when I come down in a couple of weeks, I'm going to bring Richard my smaller one. But if you want your slow cooker, Rod, I'll bring yours down with me. Yeah, I have a laundry list of things that I want brought down for whoever's coming first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nicole's supposed to come this weekend, but she couldn't, so... Uh, whoever comes first is bringing uh, wh whatever they can fit in their car. <laughs> For our guests that are online joining us, welcome. And um, because I live in New Brunswick, in Lower Carbondale, New Brunswick, and Rosalind is in Lindenburg, where Atlantic Canada Language Academy is. And the driving distance between them two is about three and a half hours. And so, of course, I'm not down there all the time. So when we're coordinating things, I'm usually bringing things from one province to the other. So it's really fun, including food. So Shumbu, we're going to be excited when you finally get in Canada, because then you're going to get an opportunity to taste some of this beautiful food that you've been joining us to experience. And I hope you're enjoying the lessons at school. It starts on the, at the end of the month. Oh, that's right. We had a beautiful week this week with um, webinars, absolutely amazing. We had about 25 people from about 12 different countries join us in learning about careers and study in Atlantic Canada. And of course, we invited anybody and everybody to come join the cooking club as well. So maybe we'll have some of those extra guests with us today that enjoyed our webinar earlier this week. And that will be excited about a lot of things that we've got going on. There we go. Cleaning up carrots to go into chili. I love putting chopped up carrots in my chili. Maureen, I think you've seen me make chili before. And I remember one of the times I made it, you were like, wow. And, and because this chili that I make is very easily switched to a pure vegetarian chili if you really wanted it to. Um, but I love putting chopped carrot in it. It gives a nice sweetness through the chili. And then it allows me to put just a little bit more heat in there because they get the, the mm. sweet from the carrot to tone it down. And my mother's looking at me going, how much heat, Michelle? <laughs> I do have, look at these. These wow. are peppers and they smell delicious i am not entirely sure how hot they are i should have if someone mm -hmm. taste test them i had um grown these and a couple and angela grew some of them and i put them on the smoker and then i had froze them so they've actually were fresh peppers that i smoked on my treasure smoker for probably about two hours and then I froze them. So now I've got these beautiful smoked fresh peppers that I just thought of. Well, that's and wonderful. Cute. Yeah. Aren't they pretty? Look at this. There's a yellow one and a red one and a green one. I like that. would love these. She loves her peppers. I think that's Philip's all time favorite to her husband. Ooh. So Jacqueline, these were some peppers that I grew and Angela grew this summer. And then I put them on the smoker and I had froze them. So they're going to go in my chili. Right. <laughs> my mother's nervous because she's not quite sure how hot this is. <laughs> uh, I made a unique treat to have with chili today. And I made an avocado cream to have with the chili. So, there you go. Very exciting. I'm going to top up my tea. I got some of my heart healthy tea from Angela. This is one of my absolutely favorite teas. Can you make sure that water's on boil, please? Um, I've already had one cup, but it's heart healthy. So, you know, I figure I can have a few cups of that. And this is made out of toasty, hibiscus, and hawthorn. And it is a beautiful tea, and I quite enjoy it. And Angela has probably. 30 or so different types of tea recipes 
because this is one that I requested. But I felt really special too. I haven't tried this one yet. In my uh, pantry box I got from her yesterday, this one, look, it's called Pop Heart. Isn't that beautiful? And it looks, it looks Valentine's Day like. Yeah. And you know what? Oh, oh, this is fun. This is what it says. Good morning, everybody. It says this herbal blend creates red hues in your cup and is not only gorgeous, but also delicious and must be shared with someone special. Mm -hmm. That's the of hearts. That's good slender though. Right? Love having that. That was a very nice treat from Angela. Good morning, Richard. Hey, hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mom. Good morning, Mitch. Nice uh, frame there. That looks good. <laughs> we are going to talk, to talk about leaves. <laughs> and peppers and carrots and all those good things. Morning, Scott. Your sauce is in my recipe today. Exciting. I have a feeling Scott's sauce is going to make an appearance in a couple of recipes today. It's the end of my Scott sauce. I need more now. Ah. <laughs> That's it. And my cook sauce is at the Lunenburg Barber, or at the Lincoln Barber in Lunenburg, I should say. So remember that too, Scott or Richard, and you get your that's perfect. Good morning, everybody. Team Madden, welcome to Atlantic Canada Cook. It's just nine o'clock. I'm sure we've got lots of guests that are getting in and joining in with us today. My name is Michelle Alcorn, and I'm a very proud head cook. <laughs> Uh, I'm president of Atlantic Canada Language Academy and r and Association. But today, today is about food and connecting with food. It is week 77, everybody. So if you can imagine, I did this, I guess this really neat little key thing. My uh, side cook here, my mom's having a hard time getting in there. And it's, you put your loose key in here and then it just screws on. So that she can drop that in, make a fresh cup of tea. I think she was trying to snap it in. And like a kitchen tool. Um, so I would say it's week 77, so it's really exciting. No. Oh. Yeah. Really mean to take them a little bit of time. And I know yesterday I prepared a few of the dishes in advance. And um, and I know many of our cooks, um, their meals are kind of already done or a little bit in process. So we've got a great variety today. And there are lots to the menu, which is spectacular and just makes me hungry. But I can tell you I've already had a cabbage roll for breakfast. Ah, so I, I thoroughly enjoy Sundays because I think I probably have one of the most unique diets on a Sunday of, of what we're enjoying. So let's talk about the menu. It's slow cooked food. I'm going to start off with an Atlantic Canada mm -hmm. chili. And we're really excited about what that's going to have. A lot of great ingredients. I've got ingredients here all in front of me chopped up. And we'll get that pot here for a little. I've already started a few things into that. Um, I've also prepared some cabbage rolls. And because mm -hmm. it's slow cooked, guess what? Those were cooked yesterday. So we're going to walk through a little bit about what that recipe is like. And that's actually originated from Germany. So it's kind of interesting that you'll see that readily available across Atlantic Canada. And, and it's a popular dish. And um, I can tell you that, uh, especially through my area in Albert County, there's lots of people making it possible. So then we're going to, I made some slow cooked spicy maple ribs. Extremely easy recipe. Hopefully anybody can make it. Nash and I were talking about it earlier, and I know being a university student, and and uh, you're always looking for something tasty and easy, and you can heat up later. Those ribs will be here, and we've got um, Hakeem Mascassi, who's our director of uh, recruitment from R&R &R Solution, has a video that he's put in for Moroccan lamb, 
and it is very exciting. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to hear that okay. The sound's a little low, but the recipe, I have to tell you, the hardest thing is I'm not going to get to try it. And we've got Rosalind with some pieces of beans, some baked beans. Exciting with that is, is that flavor and profile. And she's testing a new recipe with us today. And we've got the beautiful Jacqueline, who's in Mahone Bay from Vietnam originally. And she's going to be making a half to read it. So it's sweet bean gruel. And it is a sweet recipe. And it looks so beautiful, Jacqueline. Very excited to see what that's going to be like. And Richard is bringing us some octopus from Liverpool, Nova Scotia. And I'm excited to see this is a recipe he and I checked about a couple of weeks ago. So that I've been looking forward to seeing that how this one came together for you, Richard. And we've got the dear Diego coming in from Morocco today. And we're really excited because he's made a tagine. Uh, and I think it's a Turkish tagine. Uh, recipe that he's made for us from Morocco and uh, the video, the PowerPoint was beautiful. And we're really looking forward to him sharing that. And as always, we've got Richard's mom, Maureen, who's our Atlantic Canadian in Ireland. And she has a beautiful rice and bean recipe that she's going to be sharing with us. And I can tell you, if you're not hungry now, I know you're certainly going to be. So let's get going on the chili that I have. I'm going to take a sip. We were just talking about like my mug today. Keep calm and carry on cooking. So our favorite thing about sharing food with everybody around the world is the fact that we know individuals that aren't here yet and are thinking about coming get to make some friends and learn a little bit more of what we have going on. And for those that are here, we get to explore a lot more of our local food and get inspired with some wonderful recipes from around the globe. So Chili is one of my favorite things to make. And I call this my Atlantic Canada chili for a really fun reason. And I find here in Atlantic Canada, we have a lot of things that we put some salsa on that was in a jar that I haven't finished quite eating. And I've got a few different things in my fridge and I thought, hmm. Then I also had some leftover steak and pork chops that I diced all up into small bite-sized pieces. That's great for me to throw into my chili. But you know what I also did is I take a little bit of fresh ingredients and put them all together. And it's a great meal that we're going to be able to have a few times this week. So in the pot behind me, which is smelling amazing, and I started a little bit earlier. So I put um, so some olive oil and some raw onions. The raw onions that I put in the first time were a little bit bigger, kind of a, a larger rough chop. And I cooked them down with some fresh garlic. So those onions are now cooked down. So they're a little bit softer, a little bit brown. And then I also put some fresh ground beef. So that's what's behind me that's in the pot that's already cooked down. So now we're going to add the other ingredient that I have to go in. And one of the cooking tricks with chili is, well, you can really just put everything in the pot and I'm sure it's going to taste good in whatever seasoning. But one of the tricks that I do is I make sure that each of my proteins was cooked separately with some seasoning and then I'm combining them together. And what happens is, is you're going to get a little bit different flavor. So I just said that I put about a cup and a half. I'm making a really big pot of raw onions that I cook. I'm also going to be putting about a cup of finely diced raw onions as well into it. Because I actually want the onions cooked two different ways through the chili, and it gives it a little bit different flavor. So I'm going to turn and I'm going to start handing my mother some ingredients that are going into this. We're also going to put a can. I'm going to can of stewed tomatoes. So these are no salt added, and they're just for the chopped line and the stewed tomato. You can get them for about a dollar twenty-five, dollar fifty, oftentimes on sale here in Canada. Really easy to get among the frozen. I decided today that I'm going to add some chickpeas in. I was thinking of channeling my inner Roz one night, and I got thinking about it. I thought, I know I'm not going to make hummus, Roz. You make the best hummus, so I don't need to make it. So what I decided to do is I'm going to put a can of chickpeas. So I drained these, and then I also rinsed them. 
So I rinsed them out just to get some of the extra starch and stuff that had come from the can. So I'm going to put those cookies in there. The other thing I like to do, good morning, Andrew, we've got Calvin coming in from the Dominican Republic. That's always great. I also like to put, I don't usually put beans in my soap. Um, I find beans sometimes to be a little bit harder to digest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some lentils. So, and I think lentils are fairly readily available and they're so tiny. Those tiny little, these are green lentils. So, and because I'm putting, I know I'm putting a half and a bit of green lentils, I know I'm going to need some more moisture in there because those are going to be requiring moisture in order to cook. So, we'll give them for the month. I'm going to dump those in there. And we're going to add, with that, I'm going to add three cups of cold water. So, Mom, if you went in the room, the hot water here for the month. And then we're going to add three cups of hot water into that pot. Again, the water is more to balance cooking the lentils right now. Trust me, it'll get absorbed. There's a little bit of liquid that was with a can of stewed tomatoes, but not nearly enough to get all those vegetables cooking. So the other thing, and I probably should have chose a different color of pepper. So you know how sometimes in your fridge you look in there and you see maybe a vegetable it's getting a little soft and it's been in the fridge a little long time. Great opportunity for season to those to end up in chili today. Mine was an orange pepper. So in this bowl, it's oh, the sun's gonna help me. Bit of an optical illusion. Half of this bowl is chopped orange peppers. The other half of the bowl is chopped carrots. So we have orange peppers and then we have the carrots. And I dice the carrot stuff with a nice small bite sized pieces. And these are wonderful fresh carrots. There we go. From Angela. And um, they're all different sizes. So they're in there. So we'll have a little carrot um, lineup here. Here's some of the crazy looking carrots. Look at this one, looks like a little pair of pants. We've got a little dance party going on. So we've got some crazy looking carrots, but the delicious firm carrots from here. And so I put about two cups of carrots that I want. Again, I'm making a fairly large pot. So in this bowl, beautiful bowl I picked up in Italy, is diced celery with a little bit of the celery leaves as well as thrown into that. Like my mother's banner behind me going, how much more is going in this pot? Oh, we have lots of room. We have lots of room in that pot. So another thing, if you have frozen corn, this happens to be frozen corn that I buy. So I'm putting about a cup of frozen, <laughs> sitting on the counter for a few minutes. I think it's a frozen corn pickle right now. Gonna go in there. So, and if you remember earlier, I mentioned I've got some diced up cooked steak that I have left over. Um, sometimes we use that on nachos and other things as well. So I've cubed that up again, bite sized pieces. We want to make sure it's nice and small because remember it's a chili. So I made sure that everything is small enough so you can get a lot of different pieces on your fork because you want to get all those beautiful flavors. In this dish, I had also cooked up some meat that would have gone inside those cabbage bowls I'm going to talk about afterwards. This has some Acadian ground sausage actually that's in it. Beautiful seasoning from a um, from a gift farmer's market um from butcher meat and then we've got some beautiful brown pork so i fried these up those are already cooked and we're going to put those in the pot so at this stage of the game the only thing I'll, other thing i'm going to add to that is probably a little bit more liquid when i yeah. had a peek back there my mom just said yes yeah. so probably going to up that to four cups of water and then i'm going to put a can of tomato paste, because I want to get that a little bit thicker as well for that sauce. Now, I'm not going to eat this chili for about two hours from now. So that chili is going to cook for about two hours. But all those ingredients are the base ingredients that are going into it. Now, I need to put some seasoning. So I'm going to use some of Angela's farmhouse blend because I really like that it has the sea salt, it's got organic onion, garlic, pepper, thyme, oregano, basil, and parsley, which is lovely. But I'm also going to put about a quarter of a cup of Scott's buffalo hickory sauce in it. 
because they know what that's going to do using a little bit of a buffalo sauce. It's going to add a nice breathing up and it's going to give me a good amount of heat. So the other thing that I do really enjoy putting in chili is I also put uh, a little bit of chili powder. So we were also discussing earlier, I am going to put a little heat in there to get everybody to put themselves on mute. Somehow I'm not able to do that. So these were peppers that Angela made Dougal grew down at Funny Farms here in Isaac's Landing, just about 20 minutes down the road from me. Hopefully you can see there's a nice red one in one of those yellow and a beautiful green chilies. And I think they're a little spicy, but I actually had smoked these on my Traeger smoker and then I froze them. So everyone, I have a little bag of them. So if I just want a little bit of extra flavor in a recipe, I can pull those nice fresh peppers out. And sometimes at the end of the season here, we have a lot of tomatoes and a lot of peppers. Well, I did the same thing with my tomatoes, but we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. So I'm going to dice these beautiful little peppers up. Seeds and all. I might take a few seeds out. I'm laughing. I've got to start a, a resident pepper guy on here. I didn't have Scott around to do a taste test. I usually make, ask him to taste them so he can tell me how hot they are. Excellent. And then the other fun thing is I have two bottles of leftover salsa. I think I said that earlier in my fridge from a few weeks ago. I'm going to throw those into my chili. Yes, please. Smell. So whew, I can smell the peppers and I think they're hot. So I'm going to separate a few of these seeds out before I put them into that pot. One thing I have learned in time when you're cooking with heat, put a little bit in, taste test it later. You can always add a little bit more. It's the same thing like salt. If anybody's done that in a recipe, but you can't take it back out. So I usually process with that with my heat. So chili's all in there, mum's stirring the pot. It looks absolutely beautiful. And we're gonna get that bubbling and we're gonna show everybody what that looks like. So I'm so, Evelyn, great to see you coming in from Kenya. And it's wonderful to see Kelvin. Copeland here, he's from the Dominican Republic. He does some work with us down there. So it's lovely to have Kelvin joining us today. Hi. So Rosalind, let's go over and see what's going on with beans in your kitchen. And, and Richard, we're going to round over to you. And I'm going to work my way around. So Roz, let's see what's going on with your piece of beans. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks for joining us, everybody. It's such a pleasure to have you here again this week. Uh, I have chosen pizza beans. Um, and I've started the recipe a little bit already. It's very, very, very simple. It's literally um, maybe 15 minutes between prep and cooking. So what I did was I had brought down some Kurt sausages from uh, New Brunswick when I moved to Nova Scotia. So I, I took up the sausages, took it out of the casing, and I cooked my sausage uh, just so that it's not, uh, so that, we, that the pink is out of the, out of the meat. And then what I did was I cut and diced up a large onion and uh, two cups of onion and two cups of celery. So I have already cooked that as well, just until they're soft because it is a slow cooking recipe. So then what, it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my bowl, I'm going to add, oh, and while I was cooking the onions, I used uh, Angela's firm house blend that I was using last week and it has for a, onion, garlic, uh, peppers, thyme, oregano, basil, and parsley in it, and a little bit of sea salt. So that's the only uh, spice I put into it. Um, up, and then I'm going to add some red pepper, um, uh, crushed red peppers after I taste it. So this is a very simple recipe. I don't often use cans of food, but it's a great way to get your beans that are already prepared. Uh, instead of soaking them overnight because they have to they have to be soaked for at least eight hours and drain quite often. So in this recipe, it calls for a can of kidney beans. So I'm going to put it in the bowl to mix it up first because it's it's uh, my pan is too small to mix. I drained all of my beans and my peas. So and then this one's a mixed um, bean. So this one has pimento beans. It has a little bit of kidney beans. It has a little bit of chickpea. It has six or seven different blends of beans. 
So again, I'm going to put that in the bowl. And then I am going to get them all out because you can't miss a bean. You can't leave a man behind. So then I have a can of just regular beans with pork. Again, I'm just going to put it all in and mix it all up. And then I am going to add, um, I'm going to add some uh, green cut beans. Everything that I'm putting in here is green. So you don't want the liquid. I'm going to put the beans in. And then I have the wax beans, which are yellow beans. I'm going to put those in. And so it's a very simple recipe. Then I'm going to stir that up. Now the special treat is the pizza sauce. So I use, I'm using three cans of pizza sauce of uh, 213 milliliters. So that's where you get your pizza portion of the recipe. And I put three cans of this pizza sauce. There's one. And two. And the third. So now I am going to stir this all up. I'm hoping I have a can large enough to put this in the oven. You preheat your oven at uh, 325. Uh, if it's in the slow cooker, you use you you put it on high for six to eight hours. If you're not using the slow cooker, you put it in the oven and you bake it at 325 for an hour, an hour and a half. So this recipe is so easy. So that's that. I'm going to add my hot Italian sausages. And then I'm going to add my onions and celery that I had already softened. And that's that. A quick stir. And then it goes in the oven for an hour, an hour and a half until it's really heated through and quite bubbly. Once that is completed, I added a little bit of salt and pepper, um, mostly just a dash of salt, because I do have, uh, we did put some salt in it with the Angela spices. And now I'm going to add just a little dash of, um, of uh, red pepper chili, uh, chili shake. There you go. And then I put it in my dish, put it in the oven for an hour and a half, and that's my recipe for this week. And that's how easy this recipe is. I have not tried it, so I will let you know for sure. Now, you can also do this vegetarian style. You do not need to add meat. You can do it vegetarian. You can add chickpeas. You can add other vegetables. So there's lots of options with this particular recipe. So that's what mine looks like. Right. I love it. What a great idea. What a great, you know, it's a little slow to cook, but it's just delicious with those flavors. Love it. It's like it didn't take long to put all the stuff in the pot. It's just going to take a long time for it to cook. Yeah. And you actually, I, now that I've got it done the in way. the pot, though, I'll show you what it looks like in the pot. It's quite delicious. But the other thing is, is I have probably another one and a half left. So I have a very large pot of beans and I still have a fairly amount of here. So I think I'll freeze this because there is a freezing mechanism for this. I'll freeze it and do another one later. So if I really like it or when the kids come, I'll have a, a meal already ready. Look at that. My mother's giving you a two thumbs up for that one. Um, I laugh think I'm sitting here fixing. I like my Canadian made. It's colder here. It's minus a lot here in Atlantic Canada, so I'm not wearing a t-shirt today. And I just find my little cord, I keep getting it in whatever I'm doing. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my cabbage rolls before we roll over to Richard. Um, they're all in guns. The pan's going to look a little messy. Obviously, you're going to see that some are missing. And this is what the cabbage rolls look like when they're all baked into the pan. So hopefully you can see where the individual rolls. I'm going to hold one up here in a second. And uh, I'm going to do the whole afterwards on the cooking club. So please make sure you check it out. This is how beautiful those rolls come out. That just come, you know, stand right back where you are, Mom. Right there and perfect. Mom's blocking the sun so you can see better. 
right now, hopefully it's not going to fall off. They're pretty heavy. So one of the tricks with this recipe, and that's why it was, you know, I, I it would almost be a 30 minute episode just on a cabbage roll if I was to sit to show you how to make each one of the steps. But um, the meat mixture has a uh, ground beef as well as I put some ground sausage into it. So you make that all out together, put some rice. So I use some Arborio rice because that's what I happen to have on hand. And the rice that goes into the mixture is half cooked. So one of the things that is important, so you're gonna put your beef, onions, and then two eggs, and then put um, some of your bread sauce. And I made a tomato sauce, you can make, um, you can buy just a fresh red sauce that's already made, anything you have. I made a sauce from scratch, so we'll talk a bit about that afterwards. And and here's what that sauce looks like in this other container. So when I serve that, because this is cold right now, so if it was warm, you would see a little bit more liquid around. So, um, and basically what you do is you take the really big piece of the cabbage and you roll it, Josh and I bet you you'd be really great at rolling these, um, you roll it in and you tuck it around almost like a burrito and then set them into the dip. So inside the piece of cabbage is your meat and your rice mixture. And then on top with some of your sauce inside the mixture. And then on top, you put another light layer of that sauce. And you kind of bake it like a casserole or a lasagna, but it bakes at 350 degrees for about an hour and a half. So it's a slow cooking process to so make sure you get that cabbage cooked all the way through. I will tell you one thing, I meant to grab my other head of cabbage out. Um, the biggest thing is when you have that big head of cabbage, you can cut the end of it out and you're putting it into a pot full and you're boiling it so that you can slowly pull off some of the leaves so that they stay intact. And that's what's a little bit time consuming. And, and then, yes, exactly, Mom. And it softens the cabbage to make it flexible and pliable in order for you to turn them into a roll. So I do have a video I'm going to post on the cooking pub afterwards showing a little bit of what that looked like. But I just really wanted to show you the end result and we'll save that technique time for afterwards. But I must say, what a great meal, beautiful to take out, to have with anybody, and absolutely delicious. My flavoring in this one, was pretty much all from uh, the farm house seasoning from Angela, and then I put some extra fresh basil in it. So my other seasoning that added to that was fresh basil to make that very delicious. So, hopefully, look great. So let's go around here. Richard, are you wanna show us what you've got going on in your kitchen this morning with your octopus? Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> And Richard, I just want to ask you a question. I know um, I also had sent you Hakeem's video, but I also believe Nasha might have that queued up. I didn't know if you had both, but I believe Nasha can play Hakeem's video afterwards. Okay, yeah, I've got it ready. Anyway, yeah. Tell us about your octopus. Okay, okay. Well, this was a slow cooking thing, so, you know, this is several parts and pictures. So I have a presentation made. Uh, so we're going to go over to here. Okay, does everyone see a big uh, thing that says Popo Aya Gallego? Good, good, good. So, yeah, this is an octopus. And the, the reason I'm, I'm putting the, the Spanish and, and Portuguese word up is because that's where I first tried it, was in Spain. Um, these are some of the, the recipes. It's a very, very popular recipe in a certain part of Spain, on the on the west coast, and and in Portugal as well. Um, so yeah, when when I walked the Camino de San Diego, I walked all the way across the top of Spain, and in the end of it, this is Galicia. This is the area here, and that's the area where it's really, really popular. And uh, this is the the ancient area of Galicia which includes a lot of Portugal. Now the ingredients uh, are all here. <clears throat> so the ingredients I use, if we go back here, we can see there's several different recipes. Some of them take one and a half hours, two and a half hours, some take an hour. It depends whether you're boiling or boiling and frying or boiling and um, 
baking. I chose to boil and bake. <clears throat> so here we have the octopus. You can see it here, right there. We have potatoes over here. Garlic is here. Olive oil is not in the picture, but uh, it's implied. <laughs> the basil is uh, here, and so is thyme and paprika and some Scott sauce over here, Scott sauce sauce. Okay. So first step is to boil the octopus. Now the octopus needs to be boiled for a minimum of about 40 minutes. And, um, and then for the last 15 or 20 minutes, add some potatoes and boil them up nice and soft. And then here we are with the potatoes all, all ready to cook. So then you slice up the potatoes and add them into a bowl. Add one egg. I forgot to put that in the ingredients, but that's for mixing things up. And then add in your spices, your basil. And the Scott sauce. Now, so then uh, the, the octopus is ready, it's sprayed and cut all that up. Well, I cut it up very thinly and, and added it all together here. And you can see that it's all getting mixed up here into a bowl with the garlic. Oh yeah, and then here's the baking bowl, which, which I got ready in, in advance. So when I added more basil leaves in the bottom, some a little bit of ginger paste, just for flavor, along with some garlic and black sea salt pepper. Sorry, sea salt, chili salt. And then pour everything into the bowl. Add a lot of oil. This is part of the, the recipe. It takes a lot of oil. And that, that never hurt anybody, did it? <laughs> and a lot of paprika. And that gives it a final sort of beautiful color at the end. It's a lot of paprika and a lot of oil. That's part of the, all the recipes. So that's what it looks like before it goes in. And already looks pretty good. A lot of people eat it just like this, but I decided to bake it as well, just to get a, a kind of a drier taste. That's and great. It is really good. It, it's like, I think I might convert to you. I think you're kind of a anti-octite, but you might, uh, you might actually try this. <laughs> it actually, uh, it was really good. I've got some here. I've got, um, I don't know if you can, how well you can see it. But there's a plate that just came out here. And um, as I say, it's, a, it's one of the most popular dishes in the area. And this area in particular enjoys two real big benefits because they have the Mediterranean diet of, of Spain and Italy and Greece and all that, which is normal. But because they're up in the north corner, they also benefit from the Atlantic diet. So they actually, um, they're actually the longest living people in Europe as well. So there's got to be something to it. And so... Once the octopus is ready, they call it the pulpo, okay, and of course they come out and dance. You know what? Eating good food makes me feel like doing that too, Richard. What's that? Eating good food makes me feel like dancing too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, anyway, they also have kind food. of a Celtic heritage, as you can hear, they have bagpipes as well. Thanks for sharing, Richard. And that's uh, that's my deal today. So here Fantastic. I go. I don't know if it's actually breakfast food exactly, but it is about two thirty in, in in Galicia. So what the hell? <laughs> okay, Richard. But uh, I don't know what you hate, right? Um, what the one? Let's uh, if you can stop your screen share, Richard. We're going to go over and keep going around our kitchens. We've got a lot of recipes to jump through. Thank you. Nice job on the PowerPoint. Looks good. I know. Good it, Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. When it comes to the slow cooked meals, it, it's such a big benefit with with uh, our home cooks to take that time to cook it in advance. And I know Jacqueline. 
is, uh, I'm just gonna hit your mute there. Um, Jacqueline is uh, always cooking in advance for her family and has incredible recipes to share with us. So we're gonna take a little trip over to Mahone Bay via Vietnam with a, a really great sweet recipe. We've got some really great, heavy, delicious ones. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about my ribs here and show the chili when we're finished and we've got Maureen and the deer to have a look at. So Jacqueline, why don't you share and um, what you've got going on and the deer, we'll hop over to you. Uh, thank you, Michelle. Mm, good morning, everyone. Good to see you again here. Uh, today, I'd like to share with you the uh, recipe of popular dessert in Vietnam. And uh, the special thing for the dessert here is I uh, use pure maple sugar from uh, David. So uh, once again, thank you, David, for um, the, the sugar. And uh, now, let's start with the uh, ingredients. Um, by the way, um, the, the dessert here is called ke in Vietnamese. And in English, we can say Vietnamese with black bean rule. Um, the three main ingredients are black beans, maple sugar, and a can of coconut milk. Now, let's start with the first step. Uh, first, soak the beans in uh, warm water for four hours, and then wash, drain the beans, put the beans into the, the instant pot, and add one liter of water. And um, you can add a little ginger if you want to, and choose the most beans and cook for 20 minutes. And um, after cooking for 20 minutes, still keep the beans in the pot for another 15 minutes before drain the beans. And don't forget to keep the broth for later use. And then put the beans back to the pot and add uh, the sugar. And for 250 grams of beans, I use uh, 240 grams of uh, sugar. But if um, you don't, you don't like the, the, the sweet, uh, you can um, use uh, less sugar, it's up to you. Uh, and then mix the sugar with the beans, uh, choose the most saute and cook for 10 minutes. And after cooking for 10 minutes, uh, you add the broth into the beans and cook for another five minutes. And the gruel is uh, ready. After cooking for uh, another five minutes, And um, now, uh, this is a special uh, cream, coconut cream, and how to make it. I cook the coconut, coconut milk with uh, 20 grams of uh, icing sugar and add a little salt in uh, until it boils. And after that, mix uh, 10 millimeters of water into 20 grams of uh, tapioca starch. If you don't have tapioca starch, you can use corn starch. And then add, um, add it into the coconut cream and cook until it boils. And now everything is ready. Finally, 
uh, ladle the gruel into a bowl, place coconut cream on top, and if you want to, you can sprinkle some roasted peanuts on top. And now, enjoy. Thank you for watching. Wonderful. <laughs> thank you. Jacqueline, that's so amazing. And thankfully, Jacqueline gave me a little bit yesterday because we went to Bridgewater. And it's delicious. And she asked me if I had it when I was in Vietnam. And I thought I hadn't. But now that I've tasted it, I know I have. So yeah. it's delicious. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm so happy, Rosalind. Jacqueline, I wanted to, when you were saying, and if you want to, you could sprinkle peanuts on it. I'm like, oh, I want to. That was my first reaction. I definitely wanted to. I was sure to taste it. That was absolutely beautiful. What a beautiful looking dish to serve, too. I love that. Yeah, so we get some other wonderful recipes to share. And we're going to, we're going to, what would a Morocco? And I think Nasha, if you could give a thumbs up to say, are you able to do a screen share uh, to put the beer's PowerPoint up? And I think we'll just get that done. And then we're really excited. Last week, she had shared an apple pie with us. Nasha, if you could just give me a sign that you've got it. If not, we'll get Richard to do it. There we go. Look at that. Look at you there, you've got your own backup people. So we'll get you a bit of ear. There we go. We'll get that shared. Over to Morocco, my friend. Please tell us what you are sharing with us today. Hello, everybody. This is the Moroccan tagine. By the way, tagine is referred to a shallow earthen pot. And sometimes and sometime it's made by a missile. And the shallow earthen pot is the most used here because it makes the food taste and great. Yeah, I, I promise that. Can, can you? Ah, yeah. This is the this is the in the in the right in the right picture. This is the the shallow word, the shallow orphan pot, and the other it's the tagine actually, and the other one is made by metal. Please let the third one. Yeah. To make that tagine, it needs a, it needs some uh, vegetables. Like uh, in my case, I used like I used I used like uh, four potatoes and two little onion and one and big tomato and uh, one carrot, one green pepper, pepper, one red pepper, meat. Sometimes some people they 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 prefer white meat, but in my uh, personally, I love the red meat, and also I use the the peas and some of the parsley and cilantro crushed, and also some teeth of garlic. Personally, I don't, I don't I don't like a lot of garlic, and one one teaspoon of the black pepper, the cumin, the ginger, and the turmeric, and also two teaspoon of paprika. That's to make the to make the the, the dish looks like pretty red. Uh, the first thing it should, uh, after that, we gotta clean all the divisions and also cut them to pieces. Please, could you slide it to the other one? Gotta clean it uh, and cut it into different pieces. The different sheets. <laughs> you gotta let you in the Thank you. Uh, I was trying to make a good video. Then we got uh, to, but will we catch the I prepared the veggies. We gotta make the 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 meat to get fried it with the with species like with special uh, layers. Like the first layer need to be with the oil with the onion, like to to thick uh, thick onions to uh, in the first layer, and then we gonna put some carrots and also. Uh, a tomato to make the taste looks 
this good. Like uh, as a kid cutting all the all the visions, it's like you gotta take your imagination, draw with you, you know, like to make your decor, you know what I mean. And after mm -hmm. that, you can see the last layer, which is where where the last final. <laughs> Just add rice, par par cooked 
the last little bit, put it in the cap for maybe 35, 45 minutes at a low heat because that just actually gets the rice finally finished cooking and everything becomes, you know, basically to the point where it's well cooked. So it, it's it's a double process in a way because you've got your your slow cooker first for about two and a half hours and then another almost an hour in the oven before it's actually finished. And it's that's it. It's a very easy recipe to do and it's absolutely delicious. That's fantastic, Maureen. You always come with, and I like the pineapples on top. It's really quite quite lovely. Yeah, and it has a really nice flavor too, when it, especially when it's when it's cooking like that on the stove for the long for the long time, longest time of about two and a half hours. This this cooker I actually purchased when I was living in Nova Scotia, and it was a special that was online, and I've never ever seen it again. It's just an amazing thing. You can actually in this cooker, you can actually uh, roast a chicken, bake a cake. It does everything because it has the little valves on the top. So it's like an amazing kind of a, a pan, which I've had, as I say, for the last 25 years. So I remember that, that Bob. I, I thought it was a popcorn maker. That's what I used it for. Oh, fantastic. I love it. Yeah, little did you know, Richard, you, you had this wonderful tool all the way along. Maureen, <laughs> what a great, great little pot. Maureen, beautiful recipe. Thank you so much for sharing with us every week and today. I'll be curious to see what she's going to have for snacks next week. Just a reminder of everybody, next week's topic is snacks. So that leaves a whole lot of interesting things. I have to say that our kitchen here is smelling remarkable um, because that chili is now been cooking for about 40 minutes and the, 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 the flavors are wonderful. Of course, I cooked the other recipes yesterday, so uh, my house has smelled very good for two days. So this is a good thing. I am going to ask um, Nasha, I think she's down to get the video that she can pull up and download. I'll let her get the screen share on while I'm chatting away. Hopefully we'll be able to play the um, Hakeem Astasi, who is a fellow Moroccan. And uh, we'll get the video going here. And, and, and it's about five minutes and trust me, he does a fantastic job. He even put a little music in the background here. So it must be a bit of a Moroccan thing. I love it. The both of you did the same thing. So Nasha, I will let you hit play and introduce everybody. I, he introduces himself quite quickly at the beginning, but um, listen to this beautiful lamb recipe. Mm -hmm. Hello everyone, bonjour tout le monde. My name is Hakim Mestasi. I am a director of international recruitment with Adenar Solution. I work with Michelle and Patrick. I am, first of all, I would love to apologize. I would like to apologize because I won't be able to attend the live with you guys on Sunday because I will be away. However, I decided to make you the meal I wanted to present in advance. So what do we need for this? This meal is called Tangia. So it's a Moroccan dish, that's where I'm from, I'm from Morocco. So that dish requires red onions sliced, lemon confit sliced as well, and I removed the seeds, garlic, tons of garlic. I use the garlic for the smell, so you don't smell the lamb. A lot of people don't cook lamb for the smell. The, lamb, the garlic will absorb all the smell. Butter, cumin and seeds. Uh, this one has olive, regular olive and oil olive with saffron. For the color, I use the real saffron, and of course, the lamb. Let's start this. So you start by taking all your onions, you put them in the bottom. So the onions, I use red onions for preference. I love red onions. You can use uh, regular onions if you wish. So I use a lot of onions and gum. Not everyone uses that much. That's just me. I prefer to use that. So this recipe is really, really simple. So what I do is I put the onions, then I put the lamb. And those are my favorite pieces of lamb. All right, so you put all that lamb in there. Maybe I put too much lamb, but it's okay. And then you go and you put your oil with the saffron in it. 
All right, the soft pan together. I put a little bit of water. I'll be back in a second. I put a little bit of water in it. And then, uh, and then I put it back so I don't lose all the saffron. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. And then you put the cumin. The cumin here, you take it like that and you start scrubbing like this with your hands. We cook with our hands in Morocco. So, so you do put like that on top. Just a little handful like that is perfect. You scrub it and then you put it right here. What you do after is that you take your lemon, you put it right on top. The lemon I used two. That's the comfy one, not the regular lemon, just if you're wondering. And then you put your garlic. Okay, I add a couple of pieces of butter. One here. One here, and one here, if you're wondering about that, I don't know if this can be healthy, but we stay with that, it tastes good. After that, I take the parchment paper, to get the best results, you have to use a cast iron dish, that's what stays in the oven, that's what cooks it better. And that is it, we are done. What we do is that the oven is getting ready for 375. Once it's at 375, I put the whole thing in the middle for three hours and a half. And that is it, you wait for it to get ready. So I'll see you when it's ready, thank you. All right, welcome back. Three and a half hours later, now we have the final product. Before I open this, I added a little bit of salt from what you guys saw in the previous video. The salt is actually up to you how salty do you like it. Don't forget that it's lemon. It's already salty. So, uh, yeah, it's ready. This dish in Morocco takes 24 hours to cook. Because instead of cooking it in the oven, the traditional, the original one gets cooked in sand. And it stays for 24 hours cooking in a hot sand and you eat it and it's a lot better than that one but i do try to make a, a canadian version of it so let's check it out this is your final product look at this meat mm. and how tender the meat is so you get to enjoy this with a nice piece of bread or you can put some rice around it and you can eat it with rice. I hope you enjoy your recipe, or my recipe, I should say. Please try it at home, you will love it. Simple recipe, and it's delicious. Thank you so much, and I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Wow. So who wants to try lamb? I don't know, who's got 24 hours? Uh, that's a long uh, time. <laughs> that's, that's also slow cook food, Richard. That's what the beauty of these recipes are, and that's what we're dedicating today yeah. to. So the other thing about slow cook, and uh, I, I don't know, if oh, the beer's still on there. I was like, what did you think of that? Did he do you proud? Sure did. And it's so nice that he had the cuisine out. So I knew that was a surprise for you in the show. So you probably see that I added my new hat. So look at these amazing new toots from Scott's Kitchen. So I've got my nice new toot, my sweater, I'm all cozy warm for these warm cooked meals. So to wrap up a couple of the recipes, I have promised unbelievable ribs. So these are a slow cooked rib. There's a beautiful amount of sauce sitting on top of those as well. This is one of my favorite and quite simple recipes to make. Albeit uh, a lot of these slow cook require a little bit of time, but um, and I actually use the herb time as well because you know me, you can give the gift of time. <laughs> so in this particular recipe, what I've done is take the ribs, whatever type of ribs that you have, you can have pork ribs, beef ribs, whatever it may be, and cut them into the portion sizes you want to serve to the people that you're going to be serving them to. So you don't leave your rack full, so you cut it into portions. Um, mom can get me some tongs. 
um, I'll show you some of the sizes that I did. This is what they look like all cooked when they're done. So this is what it cooked yesterday, beautifully done in the bottom of the crock pot, which that weighs a lot. So I used some regular ribs, so small size, but I also had a package of some short ribs as well. So I put all of them on, so put them on parchment sheet to go into the oven, and then I seasoned them. I used some rosemary herb salt that I did get from Angela, so just a really nice ground salt with a little bit of a ground herb on top of it, um, a little bit of extra cracked pepper, and a bit of garlic powder, because like all of us, we like garlic. So I seasoned both sides of the meat, and then I put them into a four, 120 degree oven and I let them cook so that what happens is, is a lot of the fat cooks off the pork or the beef ribs the seasoning is and they get a little crispy and it's really important that you want to get a little bit of that, that brown crisp on them and I and I bake them in the oven for about 45 minutes flip them over halfway through so they're nice and crispy on either side it's hard to see because these have all been soaked in sauce but what you're getting is the caramelized crusty flavor. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take all of those ribs out of the hot oven and put them right into your slow cooker or your Instapot or whatever. Inside the Instapot, I had um, a can of stewed tomatoes, two cups of orange juice. So I wanted some acid in there. So it's really simple. So remember all this, was in the crock pot and I simply dropped the baked ribs into them, put the cover on the crock pot, and an hour and a half later, the ribs are fall off the bone. And they've got that nice crisp from the oven, and then they have the softness from cooking in the sauce. So you'll find it. And you can put whatever flavor you want in the crock pot. I'm gonna go through the recipe that I chose, but if you wanted to make this a honey garlic or all extremely spicy you could do whatever flavor that you want i usually do start with a can of the stewed tomatoes and in this particular one i used a quarter cup of Dutch buffalo stock and again i actually used the hickory with that one because i wanted to give them that smoky flavor all of them would be delicious i also used a quarter of a cup of that beautiful dark cheap maple syrup because I knew I had heat in there, I wanted the sweet to balance it. This is one of the particular times that I did put the maple syrup in the recipe early because I really wanted that to cook for that hour and a half. And remember, I'm not gonna let anything in the bottom of this pan go to waste. <laughs> all of that beautiful sauce and everything that's left in the bottom, it will be getting served with all the ribs. And I know last night we had them, and they really were quite spectacular. I have to say, Helen's sitting over there. They might have been at the high end of Helen's heat category, and she's laughing behind me. So you can put as much or as little heat into whatever recipe that you want. Um, the difference is, is the liquid for the tomatoes. Again, I use orange juice. You could use apple juice. I've done them before where they put a can of beer in there. I use a can of cider but you want something that's gonna be in there and give you an acidity. And I make you a promise, an hour and a half later, when you come back and open up the pot, serve it with some rice, serve it with some salad. I served it last night with a beautiful kohlrabi salad. So, and that's that really great vegetable we heard as drugs. I was wishing you were nearby. And one of my favorite farmer when I ordered my box yesterday surprised me with a couple of kohlrabi. So there's a green one and a purple one that went into this. So in it, I also made it with some dill flavoring. So I've got some nice dried dill from Urban Joy, beautifully freshly grown Atlantic Canada dill, I might say. So this has a little bit of mayonnaise and it's got some lime juice and some dried dill. And of course, a little bit of salt and pepper. And I use the sage and meat salt because you know, it's nice to have a flavor. So that is my pork fry. This is a beautiful pork fry to have with either my chili or my ribs for my wonderful cabbage bowl. So that's it. Chili's done. Well, it's not really done. It really needs to cook for another hour, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like. And anybody who's tuned in before, I have a way that I love to serve my chili. And when I put a few guests over, I'll get all the bowls out 
And then the block is for everybody in full. I think it's fresh spinach, some fresh baby spinach. So everybody gets the same amount of fresh baby spinach, and then I'll ladle the chili on top of it. You know what I'm going to do here? I'm going to lay it up the wall, and then I'm going to put it back in the pot. But I'm going to see the key how beautiful this chili is. So, smells delicious. There is your beautiful bowl of chili. And because it's so piping hot, that's going to sit for a couple minutes. And that spinach will wilt a little, little bit at the bottom. And you stir it in. This gives you a little extra health in your bowl, a little extra flavor. And especially those who don't like it spicy, the spinach might cool it down a bit. The other really beautiful thing that I made was an avocado cream. And I had some frozen avocados. So I have mixed up creamed avocado. So I'm going to use that as the dollop on top instead of sour cream because I don't need a lot of dairy. So I've done some whipped avocado that's going to serve as the cream on top of my chili. So the beautiful spin. I've got green on the bottom and I've got green on the top. So I hope from our kitchen to yours this week, you've enjoyed these recipes. As always, we'll make sure that we get them posted up. Um, I will try octopus if you cook it like that. I like to try it any time. You did a really fabulous job. Russ, do thing on pizza beans, bring it in some fresh and new great ingredients. And we really are thankful for our guests. And I see some of our friends on here, Angela, our wonderful farmer. And you know what? The great thing is Angela is always collaborating with me on recipes. And Scott, thank you for being spicy. And love my new hat. And I don't know, Scott, if you want to put in there if anybody does want one. I don't know how much they would. They would be might be expensive to ship. At least they wouldn't be heavy. We can certainly get you a toque anywhere. Wouldn't it be great to see the deer wearing these in Morocco? And he's always sporting that too. So, and I can see we don't see the beautiful NASA Cunningham at, from St. of X, but a lot of the times you have this St. of X toque on. So NASA will have to make sure we get one of these. And trust me, our Vietnamese friends that have moved here, Jacqueline loves her too. And so does the whole family. So let's stay tuned for snacks next week. We want to hear.